Hi, this is Munson from Munson Music, and we're going to talk about how you can play a song called That's My Kind of Night by Luke Bryan. And it starts out with a really, really cool little funky bass line, actually. And you can kind of start on the second fret on the A string, and kind of do a slide to seventh fret on the A string, and then play an open E. And I'm kind of faking this a little bit, because I don't have a bass. <laughs> but, but second fret on the A, kind of slide to seven, and an open E. And then we're going to go fifth fret on the A string, and kind of do a hammer on to seventh fret on the A string and then go back to the 5th fret on the A string, and then play 5th fret on the low E string. And then we kind of do that, almost that same thing, but we kind of start 5th fret on the A string for, for that second slide, and then open E, and then 5 to 7, and then 5 on the A, and then 5 on the low E. And the note you're actually kind of playing is going B, E, D, D, A, D, guitar part actually comes in on the verse actually kind of follows that same line and you may want to think about that kind of following that with power chords and what a power chord is is play where you're playing the root in the fifth of the chord and we'll talk about the other the bigger chords in a moment but you take the first finger and kind of go to the A string on the second fret and kind of strum just the E in the A string then that sounds something called an E5 power chord which sounds really really powerful now another way you could play E5 actually is if you take the first finger and go all the way to 7th fret on the A string and take the 3rd finger and go to the D string on, on the ninth fret and you can even strum the, the, the E, A, and D to kind of make that even thicker but that's called an E5 too and then if we take that, that E5 power chord and kind of slide it down 2 frets to 5th fret on the A and 7th fret on the D that sounds a D5 power chord and then if we take that shape and kind of drop it by a string, kind of going to low E on the 5th, 3rd finger on the A7, then that, that's called a, an A5 power chord. And a lot of our, our verse actually hear that kind of in that guitar part where we got the E, E, D, A, kind of in the electric guitar part of the verse. E, D, A. And that would be kind of a cool thing to kind of work through your verse. Now another way to play it is to kind of use a little bit more traditional bigger chords and reposition, which I like too. And so you'd start on an E major chord to kind of back up that E5. And the way you play E major, first finger is going to go to the G string on the first fret, second finger on the A string on the second fret, and third finger on the D string on the second fret. And if you strum all those together, that sounds an E major chord and it sounds really, really happy. And then for that D5, you can use a D major chord, and we play D major. First finger is going to go to the G string on the second fret, second finger on the high E string on the second fret, and third finger on the B string on the third fret. And if you kind of strum just the D, G, B, and E, that'll get your clear sound out. That's called D major. And then from the D major on the verses, we're going to go into an A major. We play A major. First finger is going to go to the D string on the second fret, second finger is going to go to the G string on the second fret, and then third finger is going to go to the B string on the second fret. And if you strum all those together, that sounds like A major chord. It sounds really, really happy. So you want to think about using those chords too. You could kind of do the E, E, D, A. And what I'm doing there is I'm kind of doing a down and then kind of killing the strings with my right hand. So it's kind of an E, E, D, A. And then we do that again. E, E, D, A. But then we go to a G major chord. And you could do this as a power chord. You could do low E string on the third fret third finger on the A string on, on the fifth fret, and if you strum just the E and the A strings, that sounds a G5 power chord, so you could kind of use that if you wanted to, and actually sometimes a lot of times in, in rock stuff like this, or if you weren't really heavy, you could even do like eight downs, it could be kind of a cool way to kind of fill in time on, on, on the power chords, and if you take the flat of your right hand, you can even lay it down on top of the, of the saddle and kind of get a, a kind of a muted quality, it's kind of a G and an A at the very end of that, so you may want to think about doing that with the power chords we were talking about. Or you, you could play a G major chord. And the way you play G major, first finger goes to the A string on the second fret, second finger goes to the low E string on the third fret, and the third finger goes to the high E string on the third fret. And if you strum all those together, that sounds a G major chord that sounds really, really happy. And then from the G at the end of our verse, we're going to be going to an A major chord, kind of, kind of for a whole measure. Now, a lot of times with a song like this, though, to support my voice, I like using some thing called strum patterns. And one of my favorite strum patterns for a 4-4 like this is down, down, up, up, down, up. So if you took the E and just tried that a lot, you'd have down, down, up, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, up, down, up, down, down, up, up, down, up, down, down, up, up, down, up. Now the weird part about that E D change though is because of where the D happens in the measure, you'd end up doing kind of a down, down, up, up on the on the E, and then a down up on the D, and then hit the A with your whole strum. 
lot of the verbs. So we got E with a down, down, up, up, D, down, up, A, down, down, up, up, down, when we get to that halving part. So we tried that through our verse form. We had E with a down, down, up, up, D, down, up, A, down, down, up, up, down, D, down, down, up, up, D, down, up, A, down, down, up, up, down, G, down, down, up, up, down, A, down, down, up, up, down, up. Or if you're digging on the power chords, you could kind of work it as kind of that E, E, D, A. Throwing in meaning for, for effect, right? E, E, D, and then A. And then you might want to go back to G5 power chord, A5 power chord. So that, that might be kind of a cool way to kind of work it too. And then from, from there, we'd be going into our chorus part. Now, our chorus, we start on a C major chord, and we play C major. First finger goes the B string on the first fret, the second finger goes the D string on the second fret, the third finger goes the A string on the third fret. And if you strum all those together, that sounds a C major chord and it sounds really, really happy. Now if you wanted to keep on following the power chords, actually there's a cool hit at the end of the chord that you really want to kind of do this actually, or, or at least I, I would, um, where you could use a C5 power chord where you take the first finger and go to the A string on the third fret, third finger on the D string on the fifth fret, and kind of do just the A and the D strings together. And that's a C5 power chord. And you might want to try experimenting with that with beauty too, it might be kind of cool. But the chord progression actually, we start on C, and then we go to a G major, and then we go to a D major, and then we go to an E minor, which sounds very sad. <laughs> and, and when you play E minor, first finger goes the A string on the second fret, second finger goes the D string on the second fret, and if you strum all those together, that sounds like E minor chord, so it's kind of like the, the, the sad E versus the happy E that, that's in the verse. And through a lot of our, our, our chords, actually, we're halving those chords, so, so it's kind of weird, actually, what you want to do with the down, down, up, up, down, up is kind of do just the down, down, up on each chord. So you have C with the down, down, G with the down, down, D with the down, down, D minor with the down. tag on the chorus tag if you were doing the down down up up down you could kind of fill in the chords now what it really sounds like in the recording is that you kind of take the c5 and you kind of have have kind of a, a down a, a kind of rhythm down down up up down and <laughs> down down up up down and then kind of go to d and you could use d5 down down up up down c down down up up down d down down up up down and then there's a C, D, G, that's a little bit quicker. So the C is down, down, up, up, D with a down at the very end of that. So you may want to kind of accent that, that with, with the power chords at the end of the chorus. I'm kind of adding in some, some left hand muting where I'm killing the strings with the left hand. I'm just doing down ups to kind of kill Tom with the right hand. So, so you may want to kind of just experiment with that, kind of doing the power chords. It might be kind of cool to jump out and kind of do power chord stuff. At the, at the end of the chorus, or you could just strum through that part. So if you try that, just strumming, you actually end up with the C with the down, down, up, up, down, D, down, down, up. of a kill it thing. So we try to, it, it, that way through that chorus tag, we have C down, down, up, up, down, D, down, down, up, up, down, C, down, down, up, up, down, D, down, down, up, up, down, C, down, down, D, down, kill it. And then from there, we'd be going into our, our intro part again, which is kind of like our verse. And you may want to go back to kind of that power chord idea just to kind of recap the tune. But a lot of times with a song like this too, something else that I like to add is bass notes. And a lot of times on that first down of the down, down, up, up, down, you could throw in a bass note for the chord. So on the E major and the E minor, actually, you have the low E string for your bass. So you can turn your down, down, up, up, down, up into a bass, down, up, up, down, you the low E bass, down, up, up, down. And on the D chord, if you're using that, we have the D string for your bass. On the A major, you have an A string for your bass. And then when we get to the G major chord, you'd have the low E string for your bass on the G. And then for the C chord, you'd have the A string for your bass on the C. And on the E minor, you'd have the low E string for the bass, just like the E. And what we're doing is we're playing the lowest note 
with the name of the chord. So it's an E chord, E minor chord, E string for the bass. <laughs> so, um, so we try that next verse that way. The weird part is that E, D halving. So we could kind of work at kind of a bass, down, up, up, and then hit the D with that last down, up, just like we were doing with the down, down, up, up, down. So we tried it that way. We'd have E with a low E bass, down, up, up, D with a down, up, A with an A bass, down, up, up, down, E with a low E bass, down, up, up, D with a down, up, A with an A bass, down, up. idea and kind of applied it to our chorus, the weird part is where we were halving chords before, now we could kind of do a bass down up instead of the down down up. So on the chorus, you could have the C with the bass, down G with low E bass, down D with the D bass, down G minor with low E bass, down C with an A bass, down G with low E bass, down D with the D bass, down G minor with low E bass, down C with an A bass, down G with low E bass, down D with the D bass, down G minor with low E bass, down. And then on your chorus tag, you'd have that C with the bass, down up, up, down D with the D bass, down up. down kill it and then from there then we kind of go back to kind of our intro verse return so you kind of hear that e down of d day kind of coming back through that part or you may want to just kind of go back to the power chords like we're talking i just think that'd be a kind of a cool thing to use that lick and then you may want to kind of switch over to the down down up up down if you're trying to just kind of sing through that part and then from there we go into our bridge part. And on our bridge, actually, it's mostly a cappella. But what you would want to do, and that means with the voice, so it's just voice. But there's this big hit on the E major chord. So you may want to do kind of a down kill it idea. Now, if you wanted to kind of support your voice through that part, you really could just kind of take the E major and just kind of do down, down, up, up, down. Up. So, so if you wanted to, you could kind of fill it in with the E major. But there's this really cool banjo lit, right? <laughs> so if you want to kind of play around with that idea, you could go second fret on the G string is kind of kind of a slide to fourth fret. So I'm playing second fret on the G, keeping enough pressure to slide my, my new to fourth fret, and then play open E and then B string. And what I'm doing is actually I'm kind of using the pick for the G string notes and then hybrid picking with, with my ring finger and my middle finger actually. that too. That might be kind of a cool thing to kind of work into the kind of simulate the banjo. And then at the very end of that of the bridge, actually there's this cool little hit on some things called harmonics. And what a harmonic is is where, where you really lightly touch the string. I'm not actually pressing down, but you kind of lightly touch the string. And the twelfth fret is the place to kind of try this actually if you're kind of new to harmonics. And so you lightly touch the string and kind of see if you can get a higher note to come out. And actually on the 12th fret, the harmonics sound the notes <laughs> that, that are, are the string names. So you're kind of playing an E and a B and a G and a D and an A and an E. And with the harmonics, actually, it, it's just kind of like a little hit. You may want to do that on the E and B string. It's kind of like a two, and now I'm kind of almost doing like a bar over the two to kind of get them right over the top of where the 12th fret is. Not where you would fret a note on the 12th fret, but where the, literally the fret line is. And so you, you, you could kind of work all kinds of different accents on that. You may want to work more. I think in the actual banjo part, though, they're kind of doing the D, G, and B, almost like a little G chord in the recording. And then from there, then we're going back into our chorus part. So on the chorus, actually, we, we could kind of do the chorus with power chords, too, actually. And if you wanted to, that, that eight on the floor idea, actually, okay, kind of to fill in time. The weird part on the chorus is all those chords are halving, so it could be kind of like four on the floor. So you have kind of C, two, three, four, G, D, E, C, G. Go back to that rhythm that we were talking about too. So you may want to go back to that down, up, down. Let's see, down, down, up, up, down, 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 up, up, down, 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 up, up, down, D, down, down, up, up, down. But then that last time we got C, D is kind of the hit. 
And then from there, then we kind of go back into, or we go into our outro, which is just like our intro, actually, we just keep that EDA, 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 EDA going. And then we kind of hit a big E major at the very end. So you could do that with power chords, right? Where we had the E, E, D, A. Down, down, up, up, down, up, and you have you down, down, up, up, down, down, up, up, down, down, up, up, down, up, up, down, down, up, up, down, 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 down, up, But that's the basics of how you can strum through. That's my kind of night by Luke Bryan. So good luck.